Okay, good. Can everybody hear me? I hear you. Okay, good. Um, hopefully, it'll record. Um, let me just uh, share a screen here. Uh, next week being Tish above, I, I think we're going to have a regular shear. Maybe I'll make a special shear, but not the, the, the regular time because by that time, people will be in Marv and eating. Maybe part of it. In so Marv, are we going to have one? I, I'll, I'll figure it out. It depends also okay. if I'm in Israel or not. I may be going to Israel this Wednesday. I don't know yet. My, my mother showed me that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, I'll find out tomorrow. Okay, so um, we're up to here. They're very few people in the world who know the truth. You know, this is like we like a quote to that uh, George Bernard Shaw: three, two percent of people think, three percent of people think that they think, and ninety-five percent of people would rather be caught dead than have to think. So, very few people in the world think, and therefore, very few people in the world know the truth. And there are several different types of people who don't think. The people who are not smart enough to recognize what the truth is. They simply lack intelligence. Just like a person who's amputated with two legs cannot go up on a ladder. So somebody who has no understanding can't become wise. Then there's another person who is smart. But he's uh, uh, drowned in the desires of this world. From his youth. To, to the point that he directs all of his wisdom to attain his desires. And to do that, which is Yitzhara wants him to do. Because he's become used to, from his youth, doing bad stuff. To the point that it is embedded in his soul. And it's very difficult for him to, uh, to, get, uh, to flee, to get out of the trap, which is Avera Sretrim. So mo most people, if they would follow their, their, their knowledge, their wisdom, they probably do the right thing. But the people who, who use their wisdom in service of their desires, because they're smart, but they don't, they, they never use their wisdom in order to determine what to do and do it accordingly, the right thing, so to speak, but they use the wisdom in only, only in order to be able to do bad things, okay? So that's another type of person. That, then there's a third type of person. People who have the uh, wisdom to recognize, and they also want to go in good ways. But even if you're smart, if you, you have to learn, right? You have to be by the right people and read the right books and know what the straight paths are. So and since he doesn't do that, he goes in darkness. Something like this is like somebody who, who, who has a treasure in his house. But he's not aware of it. He sells the house to another person. Okay, so three types of chacham. Again, uh, three types of people who lack chacham. Yeah, the person who's not smart, the person who's smart but he uses his wisdom for bad purposes, and the person who's smart but that never learns how to use his wisdom for good purposes. All these people don't realize MS. MS is something which they have to seek, and if they don't seek it, they're not going to find it. And if they deliberately, obviously, go against MS, they're certainly not going to find it. He's bone. Now, pay attention. A person with most of the meadows, if they have, uh, as, uh, not most, as a uh, person with lots of meadows, and they're each different from each other. And each mida tries to rip, the, uh, to grab and rip the person's uh, consciousness. Each mida drives him, draws him in a different direction. So the um, there's a, a statement, same name, Rabbi Saul Salanter, that uh, we find Midrashim would say 
that Avraham Avinu went to the Akeda the Simcha. And the other Midrash would say Avraham Avinu went to Akeda and with Avelos, with, with Tsar. And the question is whether these Midrashim argue with each other or not. But we saw Solanto said they don't argue with each other because a person can have two contradictory emotions at once. In other words, human beings because are pulled by all sorts of emotions and all sorts of meadows in different directions simultaneously. And every person can have contradictory, they try to contradictory meadows at the same time. What could be happy and sad, what could be angry and, and, and happy. There are all sorts of things that a person can do which are uh, contradictions. And each meter competes with the others to try and be the dominant meter at that time. Uh, sometimes when I say this, uh, a lot of people don't agree with me, but uh, I, 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 want, I think that the reason why people cry at weddings and other happy occasions is because there's also a bit of sadness involved. In other words, they're experiencing happiness and sadness together. They're happy at, uh, at obviously the simple and they're sad because, you know, something is moving on, something is different. And of course, the significance of the, of the event, whatever it is, whether it's a chasna, whatever it may be, that makes it have a profound, profound emotional impact. And profound emotional impact is manifest itself in the sadness and this happiness at the same time. So people have many different meadows and they all put a person. And sometimes they're good meadows, but a lot of times they're bad meadows. It says here, the Yetzar helps each Midah. In other words, that you'll choose the worst possible way in which to employ that Midah at that point in time. Like a person's going to the desert. And you, you meet up with wild animals, bears and lions and, and the tigers, and wolves, and other wild animals. Haisha said, this person, he has to open his eyes and fight each and every one of these uh, wild animals. If he, if he closes his eye for a moment, he's going to be torn up by these damaging forces. So it was a person with his bad meters. Such as desire, pride, Hasina, hatred, Kas, anger, the Chayet Sebohen. Mizgavalos Belibo Tommy. These are always rolling around in your heart. In other words, all these bad traits, they, they, they're always there. And they're always, so to speak, like wild animals waiting to pounce and to take hold of your heart. That you should be too proud, too hateful, too angry, and so on and so forth. And if you uh, ignore them and don't fix them, you're going to boot from your heart the light of truth. says by Mitzrayim, by the by the In other words, there's going to be a very thick, substantial darkness. The way in which a person tries to prevent that from happening is always to think of Hashem as if he's standing before him. In other words, that every, or your goal is always to do and experience what Hashem wants you to do, what Hashem wants you to experience. And obviously that means you have to consider those meadows which come up on their own. They're always there. To, to use your mind, you have to turn on your mind. To experience the meadows, don't turn on meadows. They're always there. They're just, they're, they're just waiting for the right opportunity to express themselves, for an opportunity for uh, uh, something which is, it causes them to come up and come to the forefront of a person's emotional state at that point in time. When a person is born, they're weaker than any other creature on earth. And not in both in body and in mind. All creatures, on the day they're born or hatched, they walk and they eat from same and they can help themselves out. Even those who can't do it right away. So within weeks or months, they, they're actually doing it. Human beings for years and years, they, they're not, they're, they are dumb and they're incapable, right? It takes years of, of, of growth and of training in order to know how to feed yourself, in order to know how to think, 
like all these things which animals have automatically, practically at birth. First, he requires tremendous efforts we put into his body. So he says, you know what? If you need your body, a man's body is born so incapable and has to be trained and retrained and cultivated. How much more so a person's in the Shama? A person in the Shama is born also untrained, wild. It has to be a train. Talking uh, 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 to fix the wisdom, fix now love and dark and understand good pathways. Person initially with any has no teacher, he's like an animal. So now says, but his 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 heart is like a slate, a blank slate. Nothing on the slate, and it's ready for people to write on it. And he says there are four types of writers who write on the slate of their own hearts, you know, like on the whiteboard of their heart. Um, so the first case, if this, if you're, this slate is in the hands of an idiot, you start to love he will doodle on it, I, idle doodles, until it gets ruined, has no more advantage to anybody. So an idiot grows up an idiot and remains an idiot and is useless, right? Such a person never bothered to write anything meaningful on the slate of their heart. Then there's another type. Um, Chacham, a wise man. But this is a wise man who's not a Tamil Chacham, a Torah, or a Tzadik, certainly. Just a, 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 a smart person. Yichtalab, Seder, and Yonab, it's very Chavosav, he'll write on his heart. The arrangement of his matters and uh, and his requirements and his obligations. When we talk a look and, and through this uh, plan, which he writes on his slate, Yechalko, we find his mother, will be able to support and sustain his children, and reach a great advantage. Now, uh, uh, so this is a person who has, uh, um, uh, based on what he puts into his heart, is able to uh, make plans and uplift himself and lead a high functioning life. Not like the Tipesh, whose life was low function, his is high function. But there's still two more. Haxilim, the foolish people. Now, these are foolish people who are not dumb. They're not like the first piece, they're not like the Tipesh. They're, they're foolish. The Yitzairu Bo, Yure, Hevel, Vesheker. They're going to also uh, uh, make uh, pictures, but pictures which are empty and false. Yichtavon, they're going to write on the slate, Chakuke Hevel Ba'amen, writings, literally carvings, of uh, uh, emptiness and evil. The Mali Bam Machshavas Hevel And they're going to fill their hearts full of thoughts which are empty and void. So these are people who deliberately, they're not like the idiots, they deliberately misuse the slate of their hearts. Like the person we had before who's smart but uses intelligence. Uh, only for the purpose of uh, negative things. Finally, the right way is that masculine the truly intelligent people who write on their heart with the writing of God, which is the foundation of Torah mitzvahs and how to li live with the right traits. To the point that their souls will be, uh, will be radiant, like the radiance of the heavens. When he said, tie them on your fingers, write them on the slate of your heart. So this is obviously words of Torah and words of Musa, which are going to bring a person to a higher level of functioning and a level of functioning which is thought out. Most of the other people who, they, who either don't think, think bad, think but not about higher things. This person as well, uh, uh, ideal person with so really about is somebody who thinks and thinks about higher things and thinks about what Hashem wants from him. Oda Mar Shlomo. Mar Shlomo said further, even, even with the way he acts, the child is recognized. If he's pure, if, he's, if his work is straight. This post is stated about uh, checking out children, assessing them. 
from their youth, you can tell their traits. Now, everybody here was able, to, probably from first grade, if not earlier, to be able to determine who they wanted to be their friends and who they didn't want to be their friends. And usually, you determine that based on their traits. If you're loud, you want somebody loud. If you're quiet, you want somebody quiet. If, so, if you're somebody who is, likes having a good time, you want somebody who likes having a good time, you like somebody studious, you want, found somebody studious. Even at a young age, perhaps you couldn't enunciate, verbalize what you're seeing in that other person. But from a young age, you can already tell a person's meters. And certainly as one grows older, one can tell how those meters develop. There's actually, there was a book put out a few years ago by a fellow named Malcolm Gladwell. It was called, it was called he puts out many books. His name, this book is called Blink. And it went, he said that the truth is that I figure out your personality. I might be wrong, I might make mistakes, but this is human kin nature. I figure out your personality within a blink of an eye when I meet you. When I, the amount of time it takes me to blink an eye is the amount of time it takes me to assess by looking at your face, by looking at your body, by looking at you all over, whether you're a good or bad guy, whether you're an angry or, or, or easygoing guy, whether you're soft or tough and so on and so forth. All these things we assess about other people the moment we see them. We don't realize we're doing it necessarily, but we do. First, that's why first impressions matter so much. And again, we might be wrong, but it'll take a lot of effort then to overcome the first wrong impression. So everybody can see, certainly when they observe somebody over time, what their traits are, even from a very young age. Sometimes even from the time they're children, they're babies. Some babies smile a lot, some babies never smile. Some babies cry a lot, some babies never cry. So all this is part and parcel of recognizing from the youth the traits of a person. Kamoshi tiramitsas and arim, such as see some kids, near ben midas aboshas, they're easily, easily embarrassed. You know, some kids who really get insulted, they have thin skins, right? They're embarrassed very easily. We saw some eyes, and the other kids, probably the ones who insult the first ones, who are very bra brazen and tough skinned, right? You can see that in a classroom, you can see that in a play group from a very, very young age. We saw some of them some of them have a big dressers, they're like uh, uh, their tivas, you know, like eating a lot. We saw some of them, some of them inclined towards actually good character traits. Vida, and you should know. All the traits of a person you see in his when he's an adolescent and even in his old age. They were in him already in his, when he was a uh, youngster. Chakras like language of chakras at the beginning of his life. So that, that seems to be kind of depressing because it means we have all these traits which we begin with, right? Where's the clean slate? We don't have a clean slate, right? We're starting off with a slate which has writing on it. So he says, but nevertheless, at that point in life, people, uh, uh, kids do not have the power to bring out these traits and show them and practice them to a full extent. And therefore, even on Arima Nablus, even kids who, grew, who, who are now very, very coarse and base. And bad, it's easier to change them at that point. So it's like a, a, you have a sapling in the ground. So eventually it comes, becomes hardens, becomes a, a, a tough trunk with, with strong branches, which you can't really bend, only break. Like, like if you have a criminal later in life, you have to break it. But in, in the, so when a person's young, so then it's just straight, he's like a sapling and he's soft and you can still bend him in this direction and that. There's still hope to do something, a lot of hope. And uh, uh, at that point, person can take a person who's in a, ne a kid who's in a negative direction and put him in a positive direction. Because it's, it's, it's easy for the kid to accept things from other people. But, uh, much more than adults do. They don't have the strength or the wisdom, let's say, it's to go out, leave Rach, to, to remove themselves from the person giving them the Musr. They have to tolerate it. In other words, it's very hard to run away from home. It's very hard to get out of class. So therefore, they're a captive audience. 
you can work more with the, the captive audience of the children than you can with the adults who just walk away if they get if they get annoyed with you. They don't have to accept criticism. They, they, they have an escape hatch. So that's why when a person's young, they can work and work uh, well at changing themselves, becoming better people. I have a Zeke now, but when a person reaches old age, eight of them are talking about cows, they're not, it's not easy to move them. Mashiubahem Bimea Bachrus from that which they acquired already had during when they were very young. They're like a silver tray which was buried in the uh, in the ground. It got it had thick rust or tarnish on it. The great length of time was buried. So also Marika you have to uh, scrub and scrub and scrub and polish and polish that silver. Until it gets back to its pleasant, to, to its pleasant shine, to, to shine and to look new. So it's a person who went for many years in his pathway, according to his custom. And he is, he is sunk within negative traits. So he really has to pound at his mind to for, reforge it, like you forge a tool. Lavdiel ben Atomi ben Atzor to say that which is Tomei and Tor. Lavdiel by avoiding become accustomed to avoid us Hashem. Actually, mida mida us tools which we believe until the good traits are embedded and tied on his heart. So a person, a person who's young, has much more capacity to change in a positive way than a person who's old. A person who's young still is the word in English is malleable. Malleable means like a piece of metal which you can bend to the right way you want it to be. And or Sadiqam is saying here that, you know, of course, even when you're older, you should do the same thing. But so when you're younger, pay attention to your traits. Figure them out and figure out what you have to improve and listen to people who give you muster. The most important thing a person can do in life in terms of Avodah Hashem is listen to constructive criticism. Somebody else gives you criticism, even if they don't give it to you the right way. They're trying to tell you what, good, uh, what to do, which is good for you. Now, most people get, a lot of people, I should say, get insulted. Say, who are you to tell me what to do? I have no desire to talk to you or to hear from you. But a person who, who, who is interested in growth, it wants to know what other people can advise them to do, what, what criticism, which, they, when they, which they're giving you, which is a, a valid, and hopefully they mean well when they're giving it to you. That's what a person is supposed to be like to be macabre Muslim, to accept whatever he's been told about how he can improve himself. Okay? So this is something which, again, it's much harder the older you get. So that's Sefer Nikra, Sefer Midos, Hamidos. So the Orchid Sadiqim called his own book, not Orchid Sadiqim, but the Book of Traits. And he says, uh, it's a bit of his own uh, praise of himself. But he's right, it's written and signed the Kabas Rahma with the ring of wisdom. The Lami Adam Das. Teach a person wisdom. Leos has safer as a biad call each with clear manus that this saber should be in the hands of every person, like a tool, the tool of a craftsman. The talking me tocho me dosa maso to fix from within it, his midos and his deeds. Human has shall be other clear manus. because if you have a craftsman who has in his hands his tools. He can do his work. But he doesn't have his tools. Right? He can't do a thing. So here too, if you this, these are the tools. And a person is the craftsman who's working on himself. So if you have the tools, you can work on yourself. You don't have the tools, you don't have to work on it. You don't know what to work on yourself. That's why I want you to listen to my musar. The cock clear on a scrub your deck and take your tools in your hand. We're talking, we'll set up the picture from your meadows. Hello, Tirek. And now he gives another muscle. Do you see? Misha is our baby name at Bos. Somebody who has lots, lots of, lots of coins, lots of types of coins. Uh, Kitano Sugadolos, small ones, big ones. Any of the air comes from, he doesn't know how much they're worth and what their value is. Loyeda Malik knows, he won't know what to buy. Bachachas is each one. Until he knows the value of each and every coin. He doesn't know what, what coins the king declared null and void, and they no longer can be spent. 
the glass of lash will seal and decree that they should not be spent. After he weighs each and every coin to see its value, as he does, call the car for all the and you'll know with each one to take to buy its worth. You need orak shava in in, in the proper value. My best goes a mechel shulot siya, and the coin which the king says don't use that coin. Yizor shloi siya ella bin yon shloi kanei. So be careful only to spend in a way which you won't get punished. If you can find the right place, right time. Even to use this puzzle coin, to be able to use it, but he has to be very knowledgeable and careful about where he's going to use this puzzle coin. Nimsa sha azel ish magia magia bechomad be'am mate mad be'ah l'tova l'simcha. If the um, so person reaches with these uh, with 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 these uh, with these coins, uh, positive outcomes and happiness. Because he knows exactly where to use it. Have a tipish, but the fool has shaloyish kavle erech. He doesn't weigh and he doesn't know the value. The only much person that is going to spend whatever the king says you can't spend ain't so fake. Yagiel zehes zehes ekavle. So that no doubt it's going to get the great damage to himself. But tovni kacha moshe zeh take this moshe and nimsha raw midos shabak, which has to do with nimsha is the many midos in you. Gedol subtanos, great ones and small ones. Shakel tishkol kol. Mida umida and weigh every trait, but pelas chach masach in the weight in the scales of your wisdom. Actually, teda er kol mida mida to the point you know the value of each and every mida. The teda mida you know the mida shapas amelch gadol, which the great king has rejected. Lizar ben be careful. So your rebbe chod leimat sebacha that they won't be seen by you or found by you. Amalkim shol kabel ezik vanish except place where you won't be punished for it. The zezak yir shleimus and with this you reach perfection. Say, oh, money be a craftsman with your tools in your hand. Now, the, 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 the Orchid Sadiq, in arranging the Sefer, he, do, he doesn't go in the order of how you acquire Midos. Later in the book, he writes the first Midos you have to acquire. First one is, is basically sim, the, the same as the Messiah of Shrine, because it's taken from that Brysa, which is the Midos of Zrizus. Zahirus is the first thing to see the shrine, but that's not that's really what to avoid. But what to do is uh, uh, is starts with Zrizus. And Zrizus means to do things with a sense of urgency. Because everything you do, you do quickly in order to show that you, you want to do it, in order to make sure you do as much as possible, and so on and so forth. But he doesn't begin the book with that. He begins the book with, with, with the Sharha Gaiba, with pride. Because the way you want to arrange the book is that you put the meetups, which are possibly the most destructive and also perhaps the most constructive first. And he goes from those meetings which are most important, those meetings which are gradually less and less important. Say, of course, every meeting is important, but the one relative to the first ones. That's why he's going to begin the book with Sharha Gaiva, the gate of, of pride, because pride is the worst thing. But he says, even pride, which normally is very, very bad, it's like, and it's like the coin which the king said you can't use anymore. But even that, you can find the right place in time where even that coin can get used. Very rarely, very few circumstances, but it's possible. So that's the place he's going to say where Gaiva you can use. There is a place even for Gaiva. It's not quite like the Rambam. The Rambam says that the, the two traits of Gaiva and Kaas, you should not have at all. But the, the, the uh, Orchid Siddiquim says, yeah, you, you can have them in very limited, specific ways. Because no trait is completely not good. Okay? So that's what he's saying. Some of the coins are very big. Those are the ones you should use very often. Some are very small. You shouldn't use them at all. And some of them you almost should never use, but still, they have some use to them. So he's, that's just going to go through the meters one by one. As he says, Now I'm going to tell you the roots of the meters and their branches. For well, Tom and their advantages, and he's coming the harm, the harm that can come from that. Kavasei Lashiv Tibe Adam and our intent is to uh, uh, bring back the nature of people. May not secludes from foolishness, El Avas Musar, to love Musar. We Shishtalu Absoim Adas Tibe Adam, and that even people who are foolish can know the natures of wise men. It's a fascinating idea. Orchestra basically doesn't give up hope on anybody. Says even people are psoim, you know, like it says, Shomer psoim Hashem, the fools. There's a way for them, if they study enough, to become wise. 
And he asked me, Hashem, he says, Yichlom, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, may his, uh, his uh, uh, the mention of him be, be a blessing. Nishal Ezer Yasiat Yishmael Shildienu Lad Rachem Ayishorim tells the straight paths, the Sibas Hasidic, and the pathways of righteousness. The Rosh Shifti Yishorim Lad Sadeh Chesed to teach to the, tri- the, the, to the tribes of Israel the congregation of loving kindness. So as I said, he starts with the most important in his, in his opinion, and in opinion, it seems, of the Pesukim themselves, the most important trait to start from is gaiva. Pride. Pride is the worst possible trait. If a person's proud, as he's going to explain, almost all negative things come from that. Person's not proud, as he's also going to explain, almost all good things come from that. Pride is the, word, uh, is, the, uh, is the most severe negative trait. That's interesting. It never says in the Torah, don't be proud, as, as a mitzvah, as an aveira. It's going to say, we're afraid if, if you're going to be proud, all sorts of negative things are going to happen. But the Torah very rarely uh, 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 has com- commandments about midos. It's just that we know that midos are the base of Torah, and midos are the purpose of Torah. So therefore, me, you know, so sometimes, uh, 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 most of the time, are far more important than individual mitzvahs and averas. Mitzvahs great and averas is bad, but better is good mitzvahs and worse is bad mitzvahs. That's why the Torah is doesn't include it in the mitzvahs because that would just push it down to the level of mitzvahs. No, it's much more important than that. And a person can be a big time chacham and still be corrupt because their mitzvahs are bad. It happens, right? And therefore, a person has to be very careful about these things. So he says, Ashar Risha, the first gate, and Dabrabo Midas Ha Gaiva. Umatov, she's Diamond Kil Now, it's a little bit strange. He says, How great is it that this happens to be the first Shar? Now, he wrote the say for himself. So I think he's the one who decided which Shar is going to be the first Shar. But uh, okay. So he says, Because uh, the person has a, a, a requirement to separate himself from Gaiva. He Pesach the Rose Rabbis because it's opening for very bad things, many bad things. Glory to Kazos the Rabbis, Homidos is no worse meter than meter of Gaiva. Kain Tsarech Adam Lischa came, and a person has to be very smart, when he got Mokam Aroi and conducted in the appropriate places. Lita Kosa, but Makush Erwiabo, and rejected in the places where it's not appropriate. And here it goes back to his Marshal and Abdama. Gaiva is that point which Hashem said, don't use it. But the Rossi commanded us about his Torah. Kamosh Nehemiah says, Be careful lest you forget a Kosh Baruch Hu. It took you out of Egypt. Now, what is the Kosh Baruch Hu? Kosh Baruch Hu is the Torah. Torah 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 is the Torah. is the Torah. Torah 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 is the Torah. They have a lot of cattle and sheep. They have a lot of silver and gold. The realm of Alpha, your heart will go up in a negative way. My power and my strength are what gave me the accomplishments and achievements I have in this world. That's, that's Gaiva. So the Torah tells us, the heart of Hashem Remember Hashem. Because he's the one who gives you the power to accomplish in this world. So there's no specific Avera here not to be about Gaiva. Let's say the, that the, the results of being about Gaiva are terrible. You're going to forget a Kosh Baruch. You're going to say everything I did, I did on my own. I didn't need Hashem. I was successful on my own. And that's a terrible de- danger. Because it explains greater length. And the person who has to be most careful about Gaiva is the person who's most susceptible to Gaiva, which is the king. His heart should not be higher than his, than, than his brothers. Even the king, who you would think, he's allowed to use Gaiva, right? He's the king. If somebody's allowed to use Gaiva, it's got to be him, right? The Torah says, no, he's got to be humble, right? Certainly raise the common people. They shouldn't be lord over each other, or they shouldn't be proud and arrogant towards each other, right? Shouldn't look down at other people. And that's a big problem because it's a very natural thing as he's going to say, but 
that's the most important thing in this world, not, not to be a bad guy. It says the two basic ways which a person has uh, can experience guy, but there are really three, but he puts the physical versus the spiritual. The, people are proud of how they look, how, how they're strong, how, you know, how, how built up their, their body is. So that's one type of gaiva. That's gaiva in a person's physical uh, qualities and a person's physique. Right? That about Hashani in the second type of gaiva is gaiva so the is the gaiva of a person in his in his uh, in his intelligence and in his deeds. In other words, the people who say uh, who take pride. Many people take pride and say, "Look how smart I am," right? So that's bad. Because it's never supposed to say how smart I am. It's not good to be uh, 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 it's if you if you get smart in order to be proud of yourself, not in order to feel satisfied with your accomplishment. That we'll speak about. But if you get smart in order to be proud of yourself, it's count it's counterproductive. Backfires. And saying the person does things because he wants to be proud of himself, again, not satisfied, but proud of himself, that's a bad thing as well. So there again, the guy, the two parts of guy. One is one is physical, and one is spiritual and intellectual, and of course, by both of them, they are, are going to be positive and negative aspects. But uh, it's getting a uh, it's getting we're almost running out of time, so I think we'll leave that for next time. So I'll, I'll let you know about next week uh, whether um, something works on Tisha B'Av, and if not, I'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a great week, guys. Take care. Bye, Abby. Bye, Uli.